an international station for an international city. This is Radio 3. Money Talk. Good morning. It's 8.03 in Hong Kong. Welcome to a new week of Money Talk on Radio 3 on Monday, the 22nd of November. This is Peter Lewis with the business headlines. Global emerging markets were roiled on Friday by a steep sell-off in Chinese tech stocks, a currency crisis in Turkey, and fresh fears of inflation and slowing consumer spending. The MSCI Emerging Markets Index had its worst week since September. The Turkish lira slid to an all-time low, and the South African rand hit a more than one-year low. It's 8.25. Let's go up to Shanghai and talk with Independence Economist Andy Sher. Morning, Andy. Good morning. Um, let me ask you about these uh, comments from Alibaba Chief Executive Daniel Shang. He told investors uh, that slowing consumption in China was one of the main causes of uh, his company's disappointing earnings growth. Are you seeing signs of that, that Chinese shoppers well, are, have think turned cautious? it's one of the causes. Yep, sorry, carry on, yeah, Andy. I think it's one. Yep, carry on, Andy. Sorry. Yeah, it's one of the causes. Uh, the consumption, consumption has been weak for quite a while. Because of a uh, high inflation, high price, stretching affordability, uh, starting with the pork price uh, tripling a couple uh, a couple of years ago. Now uh, vegetable prices are really out of the reach. I think that's a, a, a major factor. But I think that uh, this is not the only reason why uh, Alibaba is reporting uh, low earnings. I think that the, the, the tech companies in China usually are very aggressive in accounting. When the when the uh, the the stock price is high, they tend to book everything like uh, capital gains, even in unlisted uh, uh, companies. But uh, now, when the stock price is low, they tend to uh, kind of uh, clean the house and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, report all the bad news. So I think that 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 that, that might be a big factor also. And and how much um, have they been damaged by the regulatory crackdown and and the, the common prosperity drive? Has that really damaged yeah, firms' I, I, I business model? I think that uh, well, the one is uh, uh, is uh, the financial side uh, uh, and the financial and the financial. Uh, obviously, its IPO is in trouble and its business model is in trouble. So uh, Alibaba's uh, value is is reduced. Uh, the the second aspect is that. Uh, now it, the government is cracking down on monopolies and mm. on uh, kind of a dodgy, misleading uh, business practices, uh, which is uh, rampant in uh, in the in, in the internet space. So I think a lot of things they can, they used to, to be able to do, they cannot do now. So do you think this means that firms like Alibaba that they're never again again going to get back to their sort of former glory, and we're certainly not ever again going to see the sort of profits uh, that they used to make? I think that, that they will go back to, uh, they will go to a uh, kind of a normal situation that you go with the economy. You have to do a really good job to up value to, uh, to make money. But uh, you know, a lot of the consumer companies in China like to take shortcuts mm. uh, through propaganda, misleading information to ramp up sales, ramp up stock price, then people cash out to get to become rich. So that kind of thing, it's not really about the business per se. It's about the stock price. I think that uh, these kind of uh, things uh, are really uh, not not cannot be done in the future. Mm. We we had a PBOC official over the weekend uh, warning of stagflation um, on the mainland. Do you see that as a as a possibility? Yeah, I think that uh, obviously there's a monetary overhang. Uh, China has been pumping money for a long time uh, to, uh, and being able to lend the money in the property sector. Uh, now the government is deflating the property sector, and so uh, uh, where where all their money go? And also, as the property sector unwinds, the economic growth uh, will, will 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 come down also. So it's really uh, uh, you have the combination of the two. It's uh, the monetary overhang has to go somewhere, and the economic growth is coming down. So I think that in the short term. Uh, there could be uh, uh, no pretty low growth uh, over the next couple of years, maybe four percent. It could be even lower because that uh, the government is not doing something to shift the demand from property to to like a consumption through tax cuts or uh, more uh, uh, m- more fiscal uh, borrowings. So that I think that's in the short term it looks pretty green. But over time, uh, you know, I think that China is still low base economy. 
uh, per capita income is uh, this year is likely to be 12,000 US dollars. It's only 20% of the US. So there's uh, this natural uplift, uh, a drift, uh, you know, to, uh, to, uh, through globalization. So Chinese export sector will continue to perform. So that's why uh, over time you're going to see uh, 4 to 5% uh, is still uh, quite achievable. Uh, and also inflation is uh, is going to be probably 4 or 5%. And sometimes it could be higher. But uh, the Chinese statistics is not reliable. So you, you can never tell. That's just what I, what I think it's likely to be uh, that uh, that uh, kind of that kind of level uh, because the currency is strong. And, uh, and the U.S. dollar, uh, the, the U.S. is entering, uh, uh, the stagflation also. So I think that the U.S. is gonna, probably going to be like 2% or less and the inflation 4 to 5% like China. So, uh, because of the currency peg between China and the U.S. So we're going to see similar inflation rate. Mm. The, 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 um, the China Foreign Exchange Committee um, was talking about uh, limiting bank speculative FX trading. Is that a sign? Because the yuan is at a what a six year high now against a basket of currencies. Is this a sign that maybe uh, the the authorities are getting concerned about the strength? Yeah, of the I, yuan? I think that uh, uh, there, there, there's a speculative inflow of buying Chinese uh, 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 bonds. So government bonds are being bid up by uh, foreign capital, and that money is really. But first is the U.S. U.S. Uh, bond yields are really low. The second is that uh, people are expecting Chinese currency currency to appreciate, and that is because of the trade surplus is so high and it's still rising. This year is like to be seven hundred billion dollars. Chinese trade surplus is like to be one trillion dollars uh, every year for many years to come. So there will be pressure. So there will be a problem of where to park the dollars. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the limiting uh, capital inflow increasing will be a policy uh, for 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 the government. Uh, but in in the end, is that uh, the uh, the China needs to clean the house, uh, make sure the property ma market is healthy, mm -hmm. and the shadow banking system is taken care of. Then you can appreciate the currency. Okay. That's the way to solve the uh, the assess surplus dollar issue. Okay, Andy, thanks very much for your thoughts. That's independent Shanghai-based economist Andy Sher. You're listening to Money Talk on RTHK Radio 3.